I think abolitionism was a great seedbed of the feminist movement. And I say this because in the abolitionist convention of 1840, the anti-slavery convention in London, women were allowed just to sit in the galleries behind a curtain. They weren't allowed to, to actually have a voice uh, in the main convention. They could kind of sit up there and just kind of listen to it. And this really got a lot of these women angry. And uh, people like Lucretia Mott, several others that were at that convention, got together and said, you know, th this is wrong. We have to uh, uh, not only fight against slavery with our fellow abolitionists, we have to fight against the enslavement of women. And you had the rise of the women's rights movement. So you have the first women's rights convention in the world that occurs in upstate New York in Seneca Falls in 1848. And they rewrite the Declaration of Independence uh, to say that all men and women are created equal. Not just men, all men and women are created equal. And they begin to call for the vote. Of course, the vote doesn't come until around 1920, much later on. But uh, you, be, you begin uh, the movement for uh, the vote for women, for increased pro property rights for women, uh, for increased uh, employment opportunities for women. But they also move into other issues at the same time. They move into temperance issues. They look at uh, male drunkenness. They looked at the amount of money that uh, goes into the saloons. Uh, they see this as, a, as not simply a moral issue, but as it were an economic injustice perpetuated against wives, perpetuated against daughters. Get the men out of the saloon and you'll have more money for the family. Some of them will move into missionary efforts, but by the very end of the 19th century, some of the women involved in the women's movements will also move into urban reform. And they'll take on issues of children, they'll take on issues of mother's health, and help make cities places where uh, pe people can uh, eat wholesome food, where they can be safe in their jobs. So they uh, become one of the spearheads of progressive reform. And it's that social ambition that goes together with their ambition for the suffrage that really defines the women's movement by the early 20th century.